All right, uh, December 7th, can I call the meeting in order for the Traffic Safety Advisory Committee at 5.35 p.m. Um, the first thing is to approve the minutes. I know we sent out the minutes, but we did get an email that they wanted to change. Um, see Mary before I wanted to change on the minutes regarding the southbound traffic. It wasn't quite right. There were more questions, though, so I wanted to kind of talk to her first. So I mean, we can push off the approval of the next meeting. That's not a big deal, right? Do you have a motion to do that? Do you have a motion to move that? Yeah. We're not going to move until we just, yeah, I mean, we can just pass over. Yeah, yeah, we'll just pass over. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, any street sign requests? None this one. Traffic and infrastructure updates? Uh, nothing to report on the South Street Bridge. Okay. Um, they're still in the, uh, the process of getting things in order. Actually, Olivia was, was shocked that it, it slowed down as much as it had. She thought it would have become a little more quicker. Okay. That's the latest I have with it. Oh, yes, more people coming in. All right, uh, let's see. Review of complete streets prioritization plan. Want to take that one over? certain um, proactive activities within your town. So we asked for some support to do the complete streets first stages. And so money came in to help support that. So that's what this first page of this report talks about. And as a result, the Tom Galvin and Keith and I worked with a couple people from Central Mass to develop a prioritization plan. And we had meetings with different folks, you know, and gradually put together the plan that is on these big sheets. Yeah. So this was just a way to try to prioritize what we might want to accomplish if we were to get some of the Complete Streets money. So, what you had to do initially was someone had to attend some workshops, which I did, so I ended up being the town's designated complete streets. And, and because of that, we were eligible to compile the prioritization plan, which is this second stage here. And then what you see at the back of this is talk about tier three, which is the stage we'd be at now which means municipalities identify projects from its prioritization plan for funding, and then projects must be ready to go or show ready. Municipalities enter into a contract with Mass DOT for reimbursement of funds, and then municipality district state aid office will be notified to approve projects. So we're at that point, and you know, it's been years now since we've got the prioritization plan established, which primarily focused on mobility for pedestrians, I mean, more than anything. It really talks about sidewalks and bike paths and stuff like that. Because we, we thought a lot of the other infrastructure activities could be taken care of through other, other priorities, other sources. So, I mean, when you, when you begin to look at these, what the chart does is it talks about proposed timetable all the way through 27 and we haven't done anything and it was supposed to start in 20 so even if we were to start next year in like 23 that would mean we'd be running this through like 2030 or beyond. I mean it doesn't have to be set in stone and we can sort of juggle some stuff around if we decide that something had to take a higher priority. But what they did is they, they uh, they evaluated the sidewalks in the center of town and, 
as a result, we're able to say these are poor, these are good, these are nothing was excellent, as I recall. Um, and it was an attempt to figure out a strategy to connect the school and library and town offices and you know everything that's in the center, so people could safely maneuver around. Um, and those were the, the biggest highlights. And then further down the road, I talked about ways in which to even run sidewalks all the way down Pleasant Street so you could get to the South Drone and River Bridge and um, working through Carterville and trying to get sidewalks up through that network and perhaps look at the project at Highland Ridge and connect them somehow either through Harris Road or you know, some other way so people from that complex can come down and get over to St. Joe's and be able to have access to people that way as well. So um, that was the strategy. So I said to the transportation coordinator at the Regional Planning Commission, um, who, what, which towns that do we know of that have most successfully, that are similar to us, worked on complete streets? And she said, I think it was North Brookfield, but it was one of the Brookfields essentially, um, has done some real good stuff similar to what we want to accomplish here. And she felt that they had someone that worked with them to develop the, the plans essentially. I mean, you've got to have the engineering done and the plans set out so that you're ready, you know, and then you apply to the state. And you can get up to $400,000 a year, at least that's what was the, the number they were talking about initially. That number, I don't know if that's migrated um, from those early years or not, because this is something that we developed, but prioritization work is funded by Mass DOT, opportunities for 400000 in state funding annually once prioritization plan is complete, a holistic review of needs, safety and gaps, context sensitive, no, so they tried to work with us as our particular needs and, and they talked about eligible projects or traffic and intersection improvements, bicycle facilities, roadway lane improvements, pedestrian facilities, sidewalk improvements, transit facilities, which probably wouldn't apply to us quite as much as some other communities, although we might very well want to work with Central Mass and talk about access to public transit, because, I mean, they're running buses, and we're not in the loop right now at all, so. And particularly because we're not a, a, a MBTA community, um, you know, we're underserved in a lot of respects, so the notion that we shouldn't try to develop some service over the course of time uh, is something we ought to perhaps look at. So that, in a nutshell, is what's going on with with this part of the project. And like I said, Sue Jaff is going to give me that contact person from the Brookfields, and it might be somebody that we could pull in here for a conversation sometime. Now, linked to this is that Route 61 to 62 corridor study, which I can touch on a little bit if you want, because it, it ties into this. The Regional Planning Commission did a corridor study for Route 62 for us. And, and I sent you that report, I, and, I, and you've been, <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's long. Um, but there, there's three main points. One is that the intersection of, like, Gates Pond Road 62 is a focal point. The center of town, which complete streets addresses, is a focal point. And then the five corners is an issue. Cause Traffic-wise and accident-wise, incident-wise, that's one that rises higher on the scale than a lot of other things along Route 62 and anyway. So, the, the TIP, the Transportation Improvement Program, which the Regional Planning Commission works with the MMPO, which is the Metropolitan Planning Organization, each each region essentially has an MMPO, o, whatever it's, the acronym is. And that entity is made up of, in our case, um, a selectman from each subregion within our region. So there's five subregions. 
And so one of those selectmen serves on that. There's somebody from District 3 DOT. There's a couple other folks. So essentially it's this cluster of individuals that generate the TIP, the Transportation Improvement Program. And it looks out five years. And what it does is it tries to evaluate projects and prioritize them so the federal money that comes into the region, which is significant, I mean, it might be you know, 20 million or something like that, that federal money gets dispensed and assigned through this TIP process, this evaluation process. So they'll have, so what Central Mass said was, because Berlin has never had a project on the TIP, I mean, some projects are big, like Route 20, reconstruction through Charlton to try to prevent the, you know, the head-on collisions and stuff like that. So you can see why some of those might rise to the top faster than some we might do. But she said, because we haven't had anything, and because you've got incidents at five corners, and because you've got questions about what's going to happen along that corridor, um, it's plausible to assume that we could probably pick up some money at some point from the tip. Now that might be five years out, but Nonetheless, you've got to get in line in order to get there. So um, with this corridor study, it looked as though the five corners and the culverts, because that's what a, a lot of the conversation in the report talks about, is nine culverts along 62. They prioritized some of those as needing you know, rather immediate attention because they're not functioning at all, and it impacts, well, environmental issues. and wildlife and safety and all, might undermine the, the highway and all that sort of stuff. So um, because there's those along the whole corridor, but the majority of them are from Colburn Road toward the Boylston line, um, they said you might want to include those in a TIP application that would also evaluate what to do with the five corner. And so, you know, you, when they met with us, we said, you know, well, what do you do with the five corners? You know, I mean, do you eliminate one leg? You know, do you eliminate Derby coming in and only let Derby go out? You know, do you, do you think about a, a, a traffic circle there? Is that even feasible given the space that's available in the railroad and you know, all that sort of stuff? So we, we deal with that part with TIP problem. And then on the eastern end, the whole question of what do we do with 62 and Gates Pond Road, because it is a difficult intersection, clearly. Now, the planning board's looking at a, a proposal from the Cumberland Farms and Gulf Station. Did, have you, are you up to date on that at all? Okay, so um, they wanted to pick up Lacraverse's property next door and expand the Cumberland Farms so they have, you know, something similar to what they've done in Northboro, where they, you know, you end up with a higher grade product and more islands for fuel, and they probably have charging stations for electric vehicles and all that stuff. But when you think about the fact they've got Dunkin' Donuts, they sell alcohol, they've got a convenience store, they sell gas, and, you know, on and on and on. It's an upgrade that makes sense. They came to us and we said, the building you're proposing is larger than what would be allowed. Commercial structures are limited to 4,000 square feet on a, on a lot in town. So we said you, you ought to sit back and ask yourself some questions about whether you want to pick up the parcel next door that's really on the corner of Gates Pond at 62. That's vacant now. Because if you had all three of those, you'd have closer to a, a full-fledged lot. And, and as a result, you could probably think about a larger building than what might be allowed if you only had the two lots. You're still going to have restrictions in terms of size and scale, because the zone of biologist just says 4,000. Now, they might try to argue and, and come in with a, a request for a variance to that. but you know. Who knows? But essentially, it's a it's a larger facility. And when we said that to Central Mass, they said, more than likely, because of 
its location, they're going to have to present some to DOT in District 3 in order to get approval. And, and that would trigger a review of that intersection, which they said, let that happen. Let's see what happens with that. So if, if those guys move forward with their proposal, <coughs> it's probably going to trip the trigger and they'll have to have some conversation with people that have more authority than we do. So that's great for us um, because there'll probably be some recommendations and findings as a result of that. So they said, let that one play out on its own for now. Do the tip on the five corners and then work with the you know complete streets stuff for the center of town. And that's why I said I'll we'll reach out to this character in North Brookfield to see if we can figure out who that is and then pull them in and then maybe we there my sense was that that was an individual that you could work with who would help you with the engineering, with the notion that, you know, they might work through the project in terms of the application and then actually do some of the implementation. So they were willing to ride with you for a while on the first stages of planning and engineering with the notion that you'd be able to uh, use them later on. And my sense now is that Kristen's at the selectman for some use of some of the ARPA money, and one of the things was for highway yeah, it was planning. For engineering. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you probably get some stuff that you've already targeted that you want to utilize that for, but I don't know how much of it. I mean, if you, in your mind, spend all of that allocation of whether there's. We haven't even thought of that part yet. So, you know, this might be something that if we wanted to spend some engineering money on this. Now, some people have said there's other sources, and that's where this consultant or this engineering firm might help us. They might very well say there are, you know, there are other ways for you to get some of the money you need to do this engineering as a first step, and then you can go and begin to apply. But the thing about Complete Streets is it's not like you apply once and you're done. I mean, you, we can apply for you know, every couple of years if we wanted to on a project. And these are dollars that are listed in the column for expense that are, what, four, four years old now, so obviously they're dated. But um, most of these were projects that, you know, if you, they'd be under the 400,000 threshold, so you might only be applying for 250 or 300,000 at a time. So. And we can, you know, we can scale it as we want. So that's, that's sort of my report. Is that enough? I think so. For now. And I'll keep chasing Sujatha and see what she can tell me about uh, who there is from North Brookfield or one of those, you know. Yeah, I know Clinton's done a lot of complete streets. Yeah, they have. Uh, and, and obviously, Marlboro just did, because Donna Lynch is really based <coughs> on that whole, you know, they eliminated the second lane, they sh started to have a bike way and all that sort of stuff. So that's changed dramatically. And that's a complete street model for sure. Now there's another report that I can send you guys if you want more to read. <laughs> and that's from um, the Metropolitan Area Planning Commission did a, a study of Donald Lynch Boulevard for the Marlboro Economic Development Committee. And it talks about the improvements, and some of which have been made. Um, but it also talks about trying to link the Aspect Rail Trail in Hudson to a trail that would be created through the parcels of land that go along from the hockey rink to the mall. And they talk about trying to get access over to River Bridge for that sort of trail. And then they talk about jumping from there, maybe up Whitney, because Whitney's wide, to the aqueduct. And then Northboro, I learned yesterday, Northboro wants to talk to us and Westboro about use of the aqueduct as a trail to go from Westboro, which gets to the five corners, which that's where I think this 
study the, the tip thing would have to evaluate because you've got railroad, you've got aqueduct, you've got potential trail, and then you've got this intersection of five roads. So I think we'd roll that into some of that conversation as well. And the other thing they did say was there is money for culvert, but it's hard to come by. And I talked to Kristen about that, and she said she applied when she was in Leicester for culvert money from the state, but it wasn't successful. But they said, there's no harm in you trying to apply for some of that culvert money up front of the tip because you might very well get it. I mean, and, and so in two or three years, you might be able to do some of the culverts and be able to erase that from part of the tip. Yeah, DER is always sending out uh, great information for us. Yeah. Um, I get on and I started reading about the streams and what they require for it, and it's like, wow. Um, yeah, it's not simple, is it? Not at all. No. Definitely not. It's easier to do on a bridge than it is a culvert. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, because eventually the one there by the, uh, the old train stop, yeah. uh, that's a three pipe, and the middle pipe's got a hole in it. Really? Yeah. So, you know, those are the cards that are on the table anyway. So I think this is a good opportunity. And Kristen's familiar with the folks at Central Mass. She's worked with them when she was in Leicester, so. She's eager to participate in some of these discussions with them. And then, you know, we can see what we can learn from pulling in a consultant that might very well say to us, yeah, I can work with you. I'll help you unlock this door. Because the money's there, and we've done all the preliminary stuff. We yeah, just yeah. I mean, we're not talking $50,000 jobs. No. We're talking yeah. jobs of hundreds of thousands. Yeah. No, we have the same before. Yeah. And we pay taxes. <laughs> You know, and you, sometimes you've got to spend money to get money, so we, we've got to spend some of the Apple money for some of the engineering, yeah. but we can leverage that money to get more. That's fantastic. Oh, yes, exactly. And a lot of towns just start up the speed on it. You know, they don't, they don't do that, but, and particularly little towns. So, you know. Plus well, the resources. We can do it. Yeah, there are other resources to do it. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. Sure. All right, uh, next uh, business we'll talk about Carter Street. So, if you see the color, I printed them out in color this time, so they're easy to read. Um, the first page is our, basically our September 8th to October 5th, that's like our, our benchmark. Uh, <coughs> the time without the uh, stop signs. I'm sorry, with, I'm sorry, with the stop signs. And then uh, we did November 7th to December 7th. And October 6th to November 6th. Um, if you see the sheets, they pretty much stay consistent with the numbers. There hasn't been much of an increase. I mean, a slight increase in the cars going 36 to 40 miles an hour. Um, I, did, I was able to pull a graph, but it doesn't let me print it, and it doesn't let me copy it and put it on an Excel sheet that actually tells you how many cars are going at 25.6 miles per hour in that hour. You know, it actually breaks it down. I thought about bringing a laptop down and putting it up on the screen, but I think I just confused everybody. Um, so I, I put down uh, the max speed, even though it says 46 to 65, yeah. the max speed was 53, and that was one, uh, uh, two occasions over the month, um, as well as the max speed 54 for October 6th to November 6th. That was on one occasion. Um, all the rest of the speeds are like, you know, the speed limit there is 35. Really, most of the speeds are like 42, 43, 41. Um, you know, um, you know I can't remember even reading a 45. Um, so, you know, we're still dealing with 0.06% of potential speeders um, coming down on the southbound side. That's why I call it the southbound. That's why I call it Carter Street North uh, radar sign <coughs> coming south. So we're still down to out of uh, 16,000 cars, we're looking at 10 cars that are um, potentially going above the speed limit uh, without the stop signs. And you know, it increased uh, a little bit in October to 14 cars 
you know, that's over the course of 30 days. I did look up the times of the most egregious speeders, that they're, they're the 54s, the 53s. It's at 3.14 a.m. and 9.51 p.m. and 9.53 p.m. It happened on three days. Um, so I was able to pull that. Thank you for checking that. And, uh, it's interesting. Like I say, more than welcome to come to my office. I'll show you the spreadsheet. <laughs> no, we'll I think I just wanted an idea that, yeah, because yeah. my sense was in the middle of the day when you see people there, everybody slows down. Yeah. But I was thinking that maybe it's happening. Yeah, yeah it was 3.14 a.m., 9.51 p.m., 9.53 p.m. And uh, it happened on, th on uh, three different days, and that was it. Great. Yeah, it wasn't like, I couldn't look and say, oh, look, it's happened every day consistently. Mm -hmm. right. At the same time, the same day, it happened three days in a row. Um, yeah, the one in the morning and the two in the evening were back to back. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty confident that still with the no stop signs there, that we're in a good place. Great. Um, as far as the, you know, stat show, you know, and I, I added Carter Street South, that's one down by the library, uh, still very much a non-issue. Mm -hmm. That's actually a 25 mile an hour zone. Um, it does, you know, does show quite a few cars, um, you know, on this, on this sheet, remember this is a two month sheet, so we're looking at 32, 33,000 cars, um, you know, we got an issue with five of them. So, but you know, th those five are just as important as, as, as if the number is one or two, you know, or 500, you know, it's still an important number, but, you know, um, so I, I, I personally don't think the stop signs right now are in a need, um, but that's obviously up to the We all agree. Yes. Yeah, we all concur. We concur. Yeah. I. You know, it's, it's funny. <laughs> It's funny, Chief, because you know I see random people now and then that are coming down the road really fast, and these are probably the people that you're referring to that are going yeah. 60. Because I see them coming fast, and I'll go, "Hey, slow down!" And as soon as I say that, they go, "Boom!" and they fly. They must be doing 70 by yeah. the time they hit, you know, the, the new development up there. Yeah. It's a goldish silver colored Ford, yeah. and it's a flatbed diesel blue truck with a flatbed on. Those two are the worst offenders. I see them on that road, I ask them, please slow down. Every time I do, they punch it. Yeah. I don't know who they are. I'll get their plates eventually. Yeah. But, yeah, I'll take a picture of them. But they, every time I ask them, they, they push it right to the floor. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, we, we still have an issue with them coming southbound. You know, we need to figure out how to slow them down more coming southbound into Carterville from Highland Street. You know, it's, it's still an issue, you know. Um, you know, northbound doesn't appear to be an issue. Um, but it, it's still, you know, obviously coming south um, around the corner and down the hill is, is where we still have a, a, an issue. Yeah, unless you ride your brakes the whole way, yeah. it's almost impossible to do 20 miles an hour, 25. Yeah. I'm always doing that, you know, the flashing thing, but I have to ride my brakes all the way down the hill to do it. Yeah. And, those, and those flashing lights make me conscious of it. Yeah. I do. You know, I, I, yeah. I hit that number and go under by the time I, you know, get there. Without that, I think that you know I'd probably be doing thirty, because yeah. <clears throat> that's just you know you got big hills and big you know, People don't want to put their foot on a brake all the way down the hill. Yeah. Could somebody say where we are with the um, we're uh, maybe finding funding for ordering just so you guys don't have to keep changing the batteries? Yeah, we're we're we it's been in discussions. Um, it's whether or not we want to spend the forty-eight hundred dollars on uh, converting the solar or. Do we turn around by four new signs that have solar attached and still use these as mobile radars that can be moved? They, remember, the potential purpose a year ago when we put these up was they're supposed to stay in the area for two weeks and move. Yeah. Go to another area for two weeks and move. Yeah. You know, yeah. But they're not as easy to install as people think. It takes two or three of us to install them because they're all metal straps and you have to hold them in place and a couple ladders or pickup truck tailgate and a ladder, you know, so, uh, you know, we've, uh, we've definitely, definitely had our challenges. Um, there's really no easy way to install these. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's still, still discussions, you know, they asked me about it at the, uh, the select board meetings when I go in for my, uh, my reviews uh, or monthly reports. Um, but, you know, like I said, the issue is still, you know, do we spend 4,800 bucks? on converting these or do we just suck it up and 
you know, I mean, so far it's been a good winter. Like we've kind of stayed ahead of it. But, you know, the second it gets extremely freezing, that plastic isn't forgiving and those batteries are near impossible to get out because the plastic doesn't want to move. And snow banks on 62 to allow us that we can't get in there and change, you know. Carter Street, the one at the library is a little bit easier because we can sit on a rock and change it. So we can usually get in there in winter uh, and then Mary uh, plows the driveway. So we're going to be in there most days as well. So, but yeah, and we definitely have some challenges. There's no doubt about it. Well, appreciate your efforts looking into it and uh, also just listening to, to um, Tim, right? Yes, report. Yeah. Um, you guys are doing a lot and um, have spent a lot of time on it, so we appreciate it. And I, I actually was interesting to hear everything else that you're considering doing and this and that. Um, so thank you for what you're doing. And yeah, just I think um, these show that we're in good shape, and I think those signs do the do the job. So it would be great if we can um, get something that has. You know, uh, solar power. Jeff even yeah. said, you know, can one of us throw up a GoFundMe page? Yeah, no, right. You know, raise the money. Raise <laughs> five grand should be that house. All right. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I mean, really? you know, it's it's, uh, it's there's possibilities. You know, um, the issue is they keep on changing. Um, obviously, technology keeps changing. When we took took these like a year ago, they were probably already six months old school technology. Right. You know. So, you know, is it going to be worth changing these? You know, are we three series behind now? Mm -hmm. You know, do we invest the money in the three series behind, or do we keep these as uh, portable ones to put up around <coughs> and start thinking about actually placing in the real poles, put power into them, and, you know, have them, you know, they're obviously more expensive, but, you know, if it's an issue and it's a public safety issue, I, I mean, I don't have an issue put it in a, uh, an article for uh, for <coughs> for it either. Yeah. Um, Fred, did you find anything out about that? I did. I did indeed. Um, so like I was telling Jeff earlier, um, I did find those portable speed bumps like we had in the school. Uh, I'll let you guys take a look at it. Um, I couldn't I couldn't find the email that had everyone's address on it, otherwise I would have sent it down a couple days later. Um, so the speed bumps are designed by different speeds um, as to whether they're they're short short, fat, high. Um, they go down is like, I think it's five, five to 10 miles an hour. And, and it's like every 10 miles an hour, they, they change the, the shape of the design. So it gives you an idea of the cost. I actually checked the website before the meeting. That's I, pretty reasonable. Well, the website says that one that I have highlighted was 1400 But the catalog we received a little bit sooner. Yeah. The only problem with it is, uh, this wasn't even a thought when I did last year's budget. So right. I don't have the money until we have extra. If we do it in the June, it would be the time I don't know. Uh, but it is an option I know everyone talked about. You know, we've tried everything else. We yeah, this would just be a trial basis, right? Yeah, so exactly. Just be put them down, see what, how they work. If they yeah. seem to I, I think I think those in conjunction with the speed signs will uh, definitely curb 99.99%. Oh yeah, I agree. Um, and then if it is something that this works, I don't remember exactly. I don't know if it's South Street in Hudson that has like the raised sidewalks. Yeah, the raised I mean, ones, the, yeah. the raised yeah. crosswalks. Right. Um, there's a crosswalk right there at the library. Yeah. Um, that when that street is done, if we did something like that, that could take the place of mm -hmm. yeah. a speedboat. Oh yeah. Um, right by the Horseshoe Pub. Is that what you're talking about? The raised. Yeah, there's a couple yeah. of them. Yeah. 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 Right. And it works. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Over yeah. Like a week ago, and I thought it was pretty yeah. remarkable. Yeah, they they've, they've worked on Gates Farm. Right. You know, location is not that great. It's in front of houses, so you always get the farmers. But yeah. well, these aren't that yeah. high. Yeah. Uh, so the crosswalk ones, yeah, they're not as as high as our common trees. Yeah. Uh, but you know, that might be an option if if we do go that route and we try them and they work and the yeah. room's done. And now, do you pull these up in the winter for plowing? Yeah, go through it, just like we do in the school zone. Yeah. It would be a temporary thing. Yeah. If they yeah. did it, you know, if they So you stayed. get that kind of money for temporary? It's like, because you have to get two, right? So isn't it like a three? Well, I, I thought last time we were going to try one on one end and not one on the other. Right. Um, so this may actually, if the problem's coming southbound, yeah. it could probably be put on, on the hill coming down. Right. Oh, I see. Uh, see yeah. how that works. By the railroad tracks or something? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, because all it is, you're just drilling and putting inserts in the hot top yeah. and just lagging them in. Yeah, right. So if it doesn't work, we'll just fill the holes. Pull them up, right. Yeah. And it wouldn't be a bad thing because, again, even if we have the storm, uh, if there's other places in town that, you know, we can try them. Yeah. Yeah, right. You could maybe do them on other roads where they have the same issues. We right. have an issue you could try it. You know, yeah, I think that's a good thing. And if worst comes to worst, we can always put it down in the school zone. Yeah, I think it's a good investment. I think that would be awesome. Try to think that's a no-brainer, person. I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's necessary, but I mean, when you're looking at it, it's less than 4%, or about 4%. And if we're looking at time today, and there, those egregious beating is not a time, I mean, yeah, if you don't want people bombing down the streets in the middle of the night or whatever, but um, I don't know. I don't think it's necessary either, but it sounds like something has to be done. I mean, like, I feel like the, down, especially the chief feels like there's, you know, he's saying that, you know, 0.4% is still an issue. I, I personally don't think it's an issue, but if people do, then this is a good option. It's a great alternative to stop signs, which don't work in that neighborhood. So that's why I'm saying that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know when you, when and how and who makes the decision to say, oh, okay, we need to do something. Because the numbers on the, from the, these radar signs seem to show that things are okay. Yeah. We don't need stop signs. So I don't know, I don't know, <coughs> Chief, how you get to the point where you feel like <coughs> we need to do something more. Yeah, I mean, you know, we look at the statistics on the, on the south side, you know, and it's, Really, like Mark Law, it's uh, basically almost 100 percent. You know, deal with 0.22 percent of people that are going marginally above the speed limit. You know, but on the flip side, we're dealing with you know four percent. Yeah, we we can look at those two things. I mean, you know, the same road, the same stretch, the same area. Like, you know, how can we knock the the this southbound traffic down to? The one percent range versus yeah. the four percent range. Yeah. You know. So, have any of these studies been done on any of the other roads in town? I'm just wondering. So, like the road by the school, I know that's our crazy. our signs have been on in Carterville since, <laughs> since day one. So, um, no, I'm just saying. Are these? You know, you're saying two percent, four percent. You know, I'd be interested to know if the other roads in town are uh, are they ten percent, ten percent, or fifteen percent? Why are those issues? Yeah, why, is it, it why is this become an issue? I think, well, I think it became an issue because it was uh, something that was brought to us. Yeah. You know, South Street hasn't showed up, Wall Street hasn't showed up. Right. You know. Most mm -hmm. houses aren't right on the street. I, my, yeah. You know, like, like ours are. There are a couple yeah. of well, They're, they're, they're close, street. but they're further apart. There's spaces in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Pleasant Street does have some that are pretty close yeah. to, but. Right. The, uh, when River Bridge was coming in, we did the traffic analysis for that. The, the traffic engineer's comments were that River Road, leading away from the rotary toward Hudson, saw some pretty excessive speeds. Now, you're not talking about anywhere near the density, but you're still talking about, you know, a, a number of people that are up in the 50 mile an hour range um, cruising through. And the difficulty there is just all those entrances from those houses, yeah. particularly on the right hand and side, are, they don't have clear lines of vision. Right. Yeah. Coming up the hill and stuff. So, you know, there are other parts of town that seriously have yeah. issues. I mean, South Berlin, leaving South Berlin tends to be frequently a problem, particularly when they get past Crosby Road, because then they just take off and, and figure they got a straight line through to the cemetery. Mm. And, you, you know, you can hear them wandering all the way up through Pleasant Street, all the way up to the center of town sometimes. I mean, the, the motorcycles really couldn't crank through. So. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be interesting in the long run to acquire, I think, new, new signs, I mean, new, new readers, and being able to make those others portable um, so they could begin to service other parts of town. Because I think you're yeah. right. I mean, other people are faced with some of the same problems. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. The data is, is valid. I mean, it's helpful for us to determine what, what needs to be done and where we need to focus the attention. So, mm -hmm. you know, I support in the long term the notion of acquiring 
signs that have the solar, but then be able, maybe on a seasonal basis, so you didn't have to worry about changing batteries in the middle of the winter, but yeah, cause you know, I mean, moving them around. As well as you know, trying to move plastic in 10 yeah. degree weather. No. Uh, yeah. So it doesn't bend too well. I don't. Well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It Trust breaks. Me, I know. It doesn't bend too well, the batteries don't last long. Yeah, the batteries don't last right. at all in cold. So. But I think so long as they're here, I, I, I've seen a huge difference since those sides have gone in. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I much prefer that to yeah. the speed bumps or whatever. And I think they're effective if yeah. the town can afford to purchase ones that are you know feasible, that you don't have to be out there in the middle of the ice and yeah. changing them every other week or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's kind of interesting to see, like, I, I agree, all those p other uh, sticking points, like on mm -hmm. River Road, it's like, you know, what are we gonna have speed bumps? This this is gonna be the town of speed bumps. You know what I mean? It's like, um, you know. Well, see the lot of speed bumps. Speed bumps. <laughs> you could be like the rock room with the mannequin up here, yeah. The uniform. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Had that out there for years. The old black box that used to be up in Carnival. Is that a car counter? Speed and car counter. I think it's uh, fried. Yeah. How long did that go? I think that's why we got these signs. Really? Yeah. 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 Huh? I didn't even know. Yeah, Where the little, little black boxes. Uh, um, well, it's probably here in the building somewhere. But it was it's still not there. It's in Cargo itself or above? Uh, it used to be just right yeah. to a pole. It was everywhere. Yeah. Oh, you used to move it around? Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's just a little black box, nothing. Huh? Yeah, there were no wires pulled or anything. Um, it charged the battery and I think next year is the year that Central Mass does counts in Berlin again, so we ought to make sure we're in the loop on that one. Yeah, I know they just did counts on uh, Gates Bond, but I haven't seen any results yet. Yeah, no, I, we asked them they're to do that. To, they're supposed to be done in March, and they showed up for October. Yeah. All right. Fred, can I jump back to who was saying, so are you going to try to get funding for one of those? Because you, like you said, you could use them in multiple areas. That'd be June. Yeah, um, oh, okay. so, yeah, where I didn't put it in the budget, yep. um, the plan was if there was money left over towards the end of June, yep. um, and I'd be able to fund it. Uh, don't wear sure. six plows and yeah. 14 blades and... Mm -hmm. and it's not going to snow this one. Well, I, they're all set. I hope so. <laughs> I like the way you think. I think you're right. You're saying one more <laughs> this year. One, that's fun. I want snow, not ice like last year. At night on a Saturday. Yeah. Never happens though. <laughs> yeah, then it started at 5 a.m. Right. Yeah, the rats eat their milk and bread. All right. Yeah. All right. So, All right. We, so I think we're done. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Just aye.